push that chair using the, those hand positions. Look at Jeff's hands, they're in a 12 o'clock position with the thumb on the tire. As he turns to push, watch his motion, shoulders down, shoulders down, heads up, and he's going from 12 to 3 o'clock. At no point is Jeff's head dropping where he cannot see the whole floor, but it stays up so he can see what's in front of him and what's to his side. The 12 to 3 motion is like a piston in a car where his hands are moving as fast as they can and then he recovers so he can get right back to 12 o'clock. The most important part of pushing is trying to get as many reps in as possible. So when Glass is pushing the chair, he's trying to count his hands and see how many pushes he gets in from spot A to spot B. The more revolutions, the faster the chair. When Glass goes to push backwards, it's the complete opposite. The thumb position is the same, but he's going 3 to 12. Now, instead of having his shoulders forward, his shoulders are back, and he's checking his shoulders to see where he's going so he doesn't run into another player, opponent, or official. Again, as he works his hands, it's like rowing a boat. The hands have to work together and have to move as fast as humanly possible. Now that you've learned to push your chair forwards and backwards, the next part is pivoting. You have to be able to turn your chair as fast as you can to make the next move on the basketball court. With just hands, he's going to turn left, and he's going to pull one way and push the other with the opposite wheel. So his right hand and left hand have to work together. In doing so, they're going in opposite directions. Again, much like moving forward and backwards, you have to move your hands as fast as you can. One of the things that you can do to help yourself with your push is to count strokes. If you're inside, get on a basketball court and start at one end line and try to count how many strokes you can get from the end line to end line. Then each time try to increase it by one. The, f the faster you want to be is going to be dependent on how many strokes you can get in from end line to end line. A simple drill to do to increase your speed is to count the number of strokes pushing from end line to end line. If you have availability to an indoor court, get on the baseline and push to the other baseline and count how many times it takes for you to get down per stroke. The next time down, try to add one. The more you add, the faster you will become. If you're outside, you can still do this. Just set a spot on, on the outside court you're at and finish at the other outside spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, A simple drill to work on your pivoting and turning is a whistle drill or a voice drill where you have your player turning or you tell yourself which way you want to turn. So in this situation, we're going to have Jeff turn left, right, left, full circle, left, Right, full circle, back a push, forward a push, right, left, and you speed it up with every push and with every turn. You do this for five minutes at a time during warm-ups, and this will help your pivoting and turning. The next drill we work on is U-turns. U-turns is one of the most important chair drills that we, we offer. The idea behind U-turns is to be able to come behind a player without hitting their chair to get as close as humanly possible. You use this both on the offensive and defensive ends of the basketball game. If a player is sealing for you and you need to get around a player to get in, you need to use a U-turn. When you're playing defense and you have to go under to stay with the man you're guarding, you have to do a U-turn so you don't get picked out. As you develop this drill, you continue to work it faster and faster. Once again, if you don't have a partner, Get an empty chair, sit it next to you, and continuously work on this drill for five minutes at a time. From this angle, you can see the players getting as close as they can in their hand movements on how both hands work together. The power of the outside hand is the key for this pull. As the players turn around, so you can see the front of their chairs, 
Once again, you're going to see players with their eyes up so they can see what's going on on the floor. When you're working this with a partner, you want to communicate to your partner what's going on and continue to talk throughout the drill to encourage. The next three drills were all designed to show advanced athlete participation. They're called the twist, ups, and tilts. In every basketball game, a player must be able to get back up on their own in order to stay in the play. Twists are just designed to get through defenses that are trying to squeeze you, and tilts are up, help you defend better and get a little edge on your shot. In order to do this properly, Glass is going to show us his chair setup. If his chair is not properly set up, these three techniques are not able to be used. First is strapping. Jeff has a strapping up around his hips and as tight as possible. He uses the snowboard binding straps and he can click down as hard as he wants. Next, looking at his side guards, the side guards are tight on the hip. If there's any looseness in there and he can move his hips at all, he's not going to be able to do the tilting and the twisting you're about to see. Jeff's a single leg amputee and he has his amputation clicked in next to his chair to give him more stability. And finally, the last strap that nobody uses is the back strap behind the ankle. That's part of the NWBA rule so the players don't step down on the floor. The first drill that Jeff is going to do is twists. Notice he doesn't use his hands. For guys with spinal cord injuries, you can use one push and then you start twisting. The idea is just to keep turning and twisting using your hips and however your strapping is set up to move around the court. During the course of a game, players fall, players have to get back up. So the next thing Jeff is going to do is he's going to fall down and he's going to get himself back up. Now Jeff's able to cheat as we can see with that one foot, but anybody can get back up. It just takes a little work, see that? The easiest thing about getting up is trying to turn your body to the front so you can use your hands to push yourself back upwards. Finally, tilts. In order to defend and get as much and gain as much, you want to learn how to tilt. And the progression to tilting starts by using a wall. Jeff will go up next to a wall, and as he progressed to learn how to tilt, it was just seeing where his center of gravity is by tilting on the wall. Forward a couple times, getting back up. Eventually, Jeff will have his tilt down, but he'll have the safety of the wall to make sure he doesn't fall. As he gains, the stability and the confidence in his ability to tilt, now he'll pull it out onto the court. By tilting, Jeff is able to guard players taller than him, guys who are fading away from him. And in the middle of a basketball game, gaining advantage on the shot.